past two days, we have been discussing infrastructure as far as agriculture is concerned in Nigeria and even as far as South Africa. We we'll continue the conversation today. Very happy to have uh, United Capital Infrastructure uh, with us uh, as far as their Series 3 issuance uh, is concerned. Uche Nangparu is the Chief Investment Officer, Fund Manager at United Capital Infrastructure Fund, joins us now to discuss what it, we could talk about this for a whole hour. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Rotus. It's a pleasure to be here. Very, 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 very welcome. So this uh, Series 3 issuance, uh, that you've got on the table. Uh, give us some, some insights on it. Okay. So in 2021, you, as you know, you know United Capital very well. Of course. Uh, we do quite a bit. Um, we support businesses. We support public institutions like governments, subnationals. Um, and we had seen that there's this significant gap. The type of finance that you would typically need for infrastructure is missing in Nigeria, perhaps across different parts of Africa. And that type of finance is long-term money, and of the right size, um, where medium, score, medium scale, scale corporates need smaller ticket sizes, infrastructure needs bigger money. So in 2021, um, our board approved the establishment of an infrastructure fund, which is a local currency fund to provide long-term capital to infrastructure projects. And anytime you think infrastructure, you think big ticket items, power, power plants providing 500 megawatts of energy, um, expressways. You want to build a thousand kilometers of expressways to be able to move products from one part of the country to the other. Agribusiness, and if you know, you, you spoke about agriculture, which is interesting, yep. that a lot of the agriculture we have here is still done at subsistence level. And to move from that, you need the infrastructure, you need cold chain storages across different locations, you need access to where the key inputs are, you need mechanization. So, how do you unlock that agricultural infrastructure and supporting agribusiness is another area. One big area for Nigeria, because we have such a massive young population, is telecoms and technology. You need data centers, you need fiber backbone, you need to be able to take um, um, broadband capacity from when it arrives in the country all the way into the hinterland. So, we just looked to say, look, we're going to plug in that gap. We're going to launch a fund that provides the long-term capital that these sectors need. And so we launched the fund in 2021. We've had the first issuance and the second issuance. In cumulative, the sizes of both issuances was about 25 billion. We have deployed money now towards different sectors, and that's doing very well. Fantastic. So who, who can uh, participate? Is this institutionals or individuals? What's the, 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 uh, the deal with the issuance? So at the time we launched, and it's an interesting question, at the time we launched, we thought that the natural fit was just individual uh, um, institutions right. and those institutions the most obvious players are the pension funds just because they have long-term capital so they're looking for outlets to invent long, invest long term um, but our experience has expanded so we've seen pension funds invest we've seen insurance companies invest we've seen asset managers invest and then we've seen this different crop where HNIs, individual investors, say to themselves, look, I want to be part of an infrastructure investment that gives me a safe and secure return, but I can say that the value of what I'm doing is, has measurable impact, and that's where the entire impact investing story comes in. Yeah. So we now have HNIs who are saying to themselves, look, I won't be able to deploy capital towards this sector and earn a decent return. I shouldn't have to trade off between investing in infrastructure and earning a lower return. And that's why it's attractive to those group of investors. You know, there's, there's such a wide, I wanted you to take a listen to a couple things. The reason why I brought up agriculture and logistics, because I had a couple of interviews. Um, I think we're gonna, one of them is gonna be either from South Africa, or one's gonna be in Nigeria. But I want you to take a listen, as far as the importance of, of in, um, this infrastructure gap filling in is concerned. So I guess we can go through one of those, uh, one of those clips. So a lot of uh, manufacturing concerns are struggling. They are struggling because of, you know, for those who are in the food processing and agribusiness agri uh, ecosystem, they are struggling with, pro, uh, with uh, inputs, they are struggling with power, they are struggling with logistics. So, you know, I mean, you know that joke that is of people always talk about, everything is based on logistics. So infrastructure. All right, infrastructure very important. That's agriculture. Then I think we had another gentleman we talked Again, this was just yesterday, so it's very interesting that you're coming in on the second day to continue this conversation. Also, yeah, this, this is about the, plugging the infrastructure gap, a $100 billion gap. Everybody talks about um, the African demographic uh, dividend, potentially. Uh, the risk is that if we don't uh, invest in infrastructure, industry, trade, uh, and development, that uh, we don't want um, that potential dividend to become a liability. 
So on the one hand, agriculture. On the other hand, logistics to boost uh, trade. By the way, I subscribe to United Capital. I, get, I take your, you guys, your newsletters that f follow the markets, fantastic. Equities, uh, fixed income, and the like. So very, your organization, incredibly well run, incredibly very knowledgeable about the market. So I bring that up because how does one where do, where do you deploy the funds? Okay. When you, <laughs> just, you, you're absolutely right. Yeah. Like you, you, have to, you have to ask yourself that. Where do you deploy the funds? And um, if you look at it, there are big questions. Every time you think about investing in infrastructure, the question on your mind is, is this money safe? Is it secure? How do you do it? So our team, what we do is an extensive process. We do extensive appraisals, due diligence, where we typically would onboard third-party due diligence advisors to support in doing that. We have a multi-tiered governance structure where for any investment that goes out, there's layers and layers of approvals till we get to the point where we take a final decision. But at the point where we're making that decision, we've ultimately picked an asset or a set of assets that plug into the infrastructure conversation. In agriculture, what we've done is um, there's this cocoa value chain ah, okay. that is very, very important for the country because ultimately cocoa being a cash crop, you export that, you earn FX. We know how the nation needs FX at this time. Bad. And so we have supported a cocoa processor now, 15,000 metric tons looking to scale up to 30,000 metric tons. The impact is that they improve their processing capacity. They can buy more from local industry, from the local smallholder farmers. So smallholder farmers are not worried too much about where their produce is going to. And because they now process, the margins when they trade this globally goes up by over 40%. So by processing that, we've now created this value addition using the infrastructure fund as a vehicle for that. So that's what we're doing in agriculture. Now you mentioned logistics and logistics is intricately linked to agriculture. If you're, if you're setting up any sort of um, 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 farm, farm yeah. you're, you're thinking about how do I move products from where they are produced to A, the local markets, but ultimately offshore. Mm. And some of those products do need cold storage. So we are now appraising some of these cold storage opportunities to say, how can we set up a cold storage link such that if you're moving from Benue State, for instance, um, and the products are gonna to have to do overnight somewhere, there's a place where they are stored at the right temperature before they are ultimately moved offshore. Yeah. We have so many potatoes, we have, we have so many tomatoes and mangoes that go bad every year, yes. every year. Estimates are about over 100,000 tons of that goes bad every year. And um, when we're in discussions with um, sponsors, in, indeed one ambassador said to us when we we're having a conversation, that if we were to come back to Nigeria, that's all he would do, just export those products, right? So the question is, how do we set up that value chain of um, infrastructure assets, such as storage, but also the access routes to be able to unlock value. And that's mm -hmm. what we're doing. Fantastic. Our, our, our producer of this show, Lillian, she's from Benway. She went home. You need to see the size of this mango she brought back to us. I mean, this thing, the table tipped over. When, I mean, yeah, so and these, these things are wasting. So thank you so much for emphasizing that, what you're doing. What are the returns? I mean, I know, what's the saying? Past performance is not indicative of you know, future returns, but I, I, how, how's the fund, how have the funds uh, uh, performed? So the fund is doing very well. Yeah. We think we're doing a very competitive return. Year-to-date return of our existing assets is about 21.9%. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. That's pretty and good. because it's long-term, what it means is that if you're an investor, you're earning a decent return over the long period. The way the fund is structured, um, because we're a debt fund, we provide loan facilities, it means that as we're getting back the returns on those loans, we're able to pay them out to investors. So we pay out those dividends twice a year for the periods ended June and December of each year. And we find that because of that structure, investors perceive it to say, this is very liquid. I can tell that my returns are not something I have to wait to the expiration of the tenure, so they like it, and it's working very well. Fantastic. I mean, that's uh, it's always you know portfolio diversification. What, what, who is the typical? I know I asked you earlier about the individuals versus institutions and so on, but who's the typical individual? What's the investor profile for so, this? So, each one? so we split them into three, just for classification. So there are those that are contractual savings, like pension funds and insurance companies. They are typical investors into this product. Then there are corporates, and they could be either financial institutions like asset managers like ourselves. And United Capital is heavily invested in the fund as an entity. We have put our money where our mouth is. We have backed the fund significantly. So there, you have corporates, and then you have individual investors. And um, they could be HNIs. They could also be, um, we have these investors, in fact, in, interesting story. So we had an investor that participated individual in our Series 2. 
And six months later, we didn't have the Series 3 ready. He started to call to really? say, yes, I would like to get involved. I'd like to get involved. I'd like to get involved. So we said to him, because it's a closed-end fund, just give us a minute once we launch our Series 3. So the day we were <laughs> launching the Series yeah, 3, yeah. someone on the team called him to say, oh, we just launched our Series 3. He's like, sign me up immediately. Individual investor. A bit of backstory about him. Yeah. He's a trader. And so he had looked at it and said, look, I want something that's long term so that I can say my really young kids, when they're ready to go to university, there's an investment I can draw down on. Amen. And that's what's working for him. You know, I can imagine you're really excited about this and you probably are telling your friends, family, anyone that will listen, thanks for joining us to talk about this. Do, do um, you think, when you think about the current, and we preach investing all the time on this show, we come, you know, treasury we bill, know. Uh, auction results, bond auction results, uh, the equity market, um, are, Nigerians tuned in that outside of the event, do you think there needs to, more needs to be done? And of course, your appearance on the show is doing that. But does more need to be done to um, raise awareness about the benefits of investing? So the benefits of your fund now. Should we be singing this to the high heels and um, you know, having more conversations, even with kids in secondary school or universities, right, about investing? What's, what's your philosophy on that? So, so if you speak with many infra people, you'll find out that we are long-winded. Yeah. <laughs> you can talk about this thing till tomorrow. And, and that's because we find that a big part of the job description is the advocacy. Right. You need to be advocating very, very actively. You need to be engaging with counterparties. And it's not just on the private sector, also on the public sector side. You need to be saying to people, look, this is why we need it. This is how we need this. One of our investments was a PPP working with the state government through a private developer to deliver power. So we finance that. Oh. It's a five megawatts plant with 11 kilometer distribution network. What that means is that the State House of Assembly, the, Fed, the State Secretariat, the Governor's Lodge, um, um, some key hospitals right. now have uninterrupted power. And they've had that for six months, uninterrupted, nothing broken. Yeah. And so as, as, we, as we have done this, we talk about the success to engender the market to say, look, we should do this as part of that advocacy journey. Now, through our multiple channels, we're doing things. We're pushing out communication on subscription. But we're also doing a number of webinars um, and speaking to different aspects. You know, um, our wealth management team did a webinar last week. We're doing a webinar on the infrastructure next week. Our asset management business is doing another webinar on it. So we're, we're speaking very actively to this culture of saving and investing. I'll tell you one last thing. Yeah, in 2020, yeah. in 2012, I was in China, and we're having a, a seminar. and. One of the things they said was that the Chinese public at the time, in 2012, had about $3 trillion in savings in banks. <laughs> and so what that meant was that that money was now being pooled for investments. Yeah, yeah. And so if you, if you, if you think about that 12-year journey between then and now, and think about how infrastructure has scaled in China, how agri has scaled, is because even the general investing public is participating in yeah, investment. Yeah, yeah. And speaking of participation, so the funds open. Folks can hop in as we're right Folks now. Folks right? can hop in. All yeah. they need to do is send us an email, and they can join us. Our offer closes on the tenth of July, right. so we'd like them to reach out to us before that. Well, you're here early because yeah. you know still, 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 still in uh, still in June. So yeah. what about the future? I mean, what's you know where's the funds you know going five, ten years from now? You're looking to. I would really want to talk about what you're doing with the states. I think what you're doing with the Kitty State for Power is so so important. It's a shame that we're running out of time. But yeah, what about the, the future? What's 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 what's? So happening? I'll tell you what the future holds. The future holds us, United Capital, working with other long-term providers to provide capital for big ticket projects. Yeah. Um, if you if we cast our minds back. The biggest infrastructure that had, the last big ticket infrastructure that was built was the third mainland bridge That's right. in the country. Second Niger Bridge is trying to go up. We need big ports. So you need people like the infrastructure fund saying, look, we're coming to the fore, we're supporting these projects, and we're designing a structure that is safe and secure. And so you then have a number of big players like ourselves at United Capital leading that charge, uh, providing per, per transaction, 100 billion, 200 billion per transaction, safe, secure investments. Yeah. And what you will have is that the rate of delivery of infrastructure is just accelerated. Yeah. And if you improve that, if you improve power, if you improve energy, and you have this young population that is looking for outlets for productivity, you just transform the economy. Yeah. 
Uh, I were out of time, but is there, is there a patriotic angle to this, knowing that you're investing, making money, and you're also helping your country close this thing for sure? I, right? I think that that's really it. Yeah. That in the end, because I, I, we, we joke every day, yeah. we say there are easier ways to make money, right? right? But we only have one country. Right. We, we, we have the green passport. It's whom we are. Yeah. So we are, we're happy to support that as, as United And we have a long history. We've been around for over 60 years as yeah. a business. Yeah. Yeah. So we're, we're intricately tied to this country, and so we'll continue to drive that. Uh, 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 Uchana, uh, Chief, Uchana Mparu, uh, Chief Investment Officer, Fund Manager, United Capital Infrastructure Fund. Great conversation. You've got to come back. There's just, I, I really want to talk about the, what you're doing with the states. Fantastic stuff. Great stuff. Everybody should invest. We preach investment. You're doing the work. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much, Rotten.